Then you have ten seconds. <laughs> well, according to me, I've got three minutes, but oh, you know, I suppose yes. Scottish time's different to my no, time. <laughs> Welcome to the day stream. We've been gone a little while, but we're back with. Well, we're starting to get quite hot outside, isn't it? Yes. And Luke's been working on some Lego. This so, Luke as well, yeah. Oh, by the way, before we start, I've got a great name for this episode, John. John, since we're doing it in the afternoon and not the evening like we normally do. The midday to stream. Ha ha ha. It was 2.20. 2.20, mate. Well, I, knew, I knew someone would say that. <laughs> it's not midday. So, let's get started and have a look at some clips. Well, just to give a bit of backstory to that, um, you showed both clips, did you, John? Yes? Yes. Well, basically, I have been working on a Lego animation uh, most recently. You can see the remains of the set down there. I'm not finished yet, um, but believe it or not, I actually started out on YouTube by doing Lego animation on my old YouTube channel, which I started back in November of 2008. And um, I... I enjoyed it, but every single time you do it, it's difficult because there's so much to pay attention to. And I would say it's a good thing to do if you're more concerned with the technical side of filmmaking rather than the script and everything, because there's so, so many things to remember with something like that. Um, and this latest one I'm doing, I just decided to come back to it, uh, doing Lego animations, because it's, it's good fun to do and it's rewarding when you finish it. Although I did just do another part of this yesterday, and it was the most difficult shot that I've done so far, and it was less than a second long. So, you know, you can judge whether that's worth it or not. But I actually did it with this very camera. Uh, so even if it may not seem like it usually in the data stream, that's actually my internet, which causes the terrible quality. Um, but yes, yes we're experiencing some of that right now, yeah. Are we? You're, you're lying, right? <laughs> so anyway, uh, yes, that's basically what I've been doing. Um, there, that's the sort of first and third clips that John just showed you. Um, third one's probably the most impressive, you know, the one where he tackles him and hits him on the ground, you know. Uh, but yes, that's basically what I've been up to, uh, doing Lego stuff. It's very tricky, but it actually, as I found with my old YouTube channel, it raked in quite a lot of subscribers back in the day, before I had to um, delete my Google account. And of course, um, Lego is quite popular at the moment, isn't it? Well, yeah, yeah. Lego, there's um, Lego Movie was released on DVD this week. Yeah, that, that's a, that's quite a good film. Yeah, yeah. It was indeed in the UK. Yes. And there's well, all these there's new Lego sets. And although, all although the, the Lego Movie there. isn't actually animation, I think they use CGI to make it look like stop motion, so they're cheating. But you know. Um, so you've you've got Arthur style. Well, yeah. I mean, uh, but my old my old channel, I did sort of ones that were of far less quality than what you've just seen, and uh, I almost had 300 subscribers eventually, and that's you know pretty good for a sort of lonesome YouTuber like me. So uh, you know, compared to what I've got now, which is about 30 or something awful like that, yeah, yeah, it was um it was a good it was a good old time, but I, I lost that account because when Google introduced the Google account, which was required to go with YouTube, I didn't know that at the time, and deleted my Google account and the YouTube account in the process. Multiple attempts to recover it have failed. But, you know, you, you move on. I've got actually uh, another test Lego video on my, chan my new channel already, which is a couple of seconds long. I made that about two years ago. But, yeah, that's good. Um, this latest one I'm doing is probably my best one, and I, I hope I can finish it. Um, that's probably all I've got to say about it right now. So you haven't decided if you're planning on more then? Well, I might do more. It's it, really difficult. I mean, this one I was planning to sort of be fairly bigger than what I did on my old channel. Um, so I guess we'll kind of see with that. 
Uh, yes, um, it's just sitting there, the remains of the set from yesterday. Yesterday's me. There's a lot of blue tag down there because blue tag is very useful in this kind of thing. Um, but yes, this camera as well. Uh, so that's what that animation has been about, I guess. Um, it, it, what's happening is it, it escalates into a massive brawl. Uh, where the police and the fire service ev eventually gets involved. So uh, yes, and uh, <laughs> yeah. So lots be of great. Lego sets have been purchased to build this up. Yeah. Well, I actually, when I was younger, I used to get Lego quite a lot. So I've got like fire engines and stuff as well. So that, that that's good. Somewhere in the loft, I have got a huge amount of Lego. I think we've still got it. I hope we've still got it because I love Lego. Except when you obviously tread on it, mm. but. Yeah, no, it, it, it's 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 something that is for some reason one of those simple concepts that is insanely popular mm. to all ages, all the time, and it's not no more so than right now when the Lego Movie has just come out and everything. I, I love Lego; it's great. Mm. My yes. favorite bit of the Lego sets is actually those little tiny bits that you can use to make more interesting things. Yeah, yeah, like uh, I don't know if I've got anything interesting behind me. Uh, I don't know. I've got a suitcase. That's not that interesting. But I've the newer I've Lego sets, they're getting more complex, aren't they? With they are. different bits. It's no longer the big blocks. I don't really it's get those sets as set much. Sets. I don't really get sets as much right now, but back in the day, I used to get a lot of uh, the Lego City fire stuff and police stuff. It's expensive, I'll give you that, but uh, it's, it's worth it. Recently, for this animation I'm doing right now, I bought two blue base plates to be used as a sort of sky background. Um, so yeah, yeah, it's it's a good, fun, simple, and I love the I love the minifigures. They're they're great. The the the, the creepy little smiley expressions are, are good. Mm. And you have people that make up their own custom ones as well with little yeah, bits of paint. Yeah. yeah, there's a whole site dedicated to Lego weapons called Brick Arm, <laughs> which has got grenades and weapons and stuff like that, so, you know, a bit bizarre. But yes, um, it's great fun, and that's kind of how I started with YouTube, really. And that's when I had lots of subscribers for the effort, actually. <laughs> but hopefully this will catapult me forward a wee bit, you know. I hope Get some more subscribers, build it up again. Yes. So, yes, um, that's my experiences with LEGO. Richard, have you had any good experiences with LEGO? Um, when I was, you know, when I was quite young, you know, obviously everyone gets the Lego set. And I remember when I was very young, I had this massive box and it had three yellow, um, almost like square plates on the set that had the little holes in that obviously you can put stuff on. Mm -hmm. and, it, and then each of the compartments had just all this Lego in and it was the best thing in life ever. And always you had to build a house, always. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't oh, really know what happened to that, if I'm honest. Yeah. How, I mean... It it's, gets what? It's, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's like Minecraft, right? Because you have these blocks, and you put them together, and you build a house, everyone builds a house, and that's great. And then no, no, you no, just no, keep no, adding see, to it. That's, oh, that's my God, it's hits to, Minecraft it's hits is like Lego. The great thing about Minecraft, though, is you don't have bricks you can step on. Yeah, true. Yeah. Well, I guess, yeah. but Minecraft is so insanely popular, it almost makes you dislike it. I don't know. But well, yes. yeah, but it's quite popular, really. I mean, you don't hear Do you... loads of pe people like talking about it in the street like you Minecraft, but still. Mm. Very Do you not like being a dungeon dweller anymore? Oh, no, no, no. Well, you see, I got Minecraft. We're kind of segueing a wee bit, but uh, talking of blocks and things, uh, I got Minecraft back in the beta, and I started playing in alpha when my brother had it. And... It kind of spe it felt a bit more special back then, if you know what I mean. When it was considered a nerdy thing, you know that and was you kind could of flood a world by getting a bit of water water in the wrong place. Yeah, <laughs> that it was. Yeah, there was a kind of beauty of it being kind of frowned upon, and then then when everyone starts playing it, and even sort of all the people who used to call it nerdy start playing it, you just kind of feel like, oh well, oh. <laughs> That sucks. It's not, it's not yours anymore. It's not. Yeah, yours. it doesn't yeah. feel as personal and special. It feels kind of commercial and annoying. <laughs> um, mm. John, what? Well, yes, uh, Dungeon Dweller was my uh, Minecraft username. So, yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I just feel like I 
to get back into it, it would take a huge effort, you know, to memorize everything again, just get sort of back into it. And so, then they put out a new update and yeah. it's new recipes. And then it's noobs telling you how to play the game when when I've played it for years, kids, you know. <laughs> so I've got the yeah. books. You can get those in hours to these Minecraft how to books. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. they look quite nicely presented. Yes, that's true. Um, but you yeah, don't need them. Kind of yeah. about Minecraft. It's that kind of thing. It just feels really commercial now, rather than just a, a nice little personal game thing to play. You know, it's, it's less charming now, is what I would say. But that still doesn't mean it's not good. It's still good. I just haven't found the time to play it recently because I've been doing Lego animations. So you know. Oh. Do you have Minecraft is the real world. Mm. <laughs> Do you have Minecraft look? You know, I I don't. Um, I have played it many times, and you know, on friends' account, friends' computers, and that sort of thing. And I, I really, I really respect it. Yeah, but yeah. it's yeah. one of those things where I suppose as you grow up, your imagination starts to focus on certain things rather than just like. I can build anything I like. So when I start on the Minecraft thing, I, I thought I'll build a house, I'll explore a bit. I quite like the, the, the randomly generated and the exploring and all that sort of thing. That's quite cool. But yeah, but but then I think, oh well, what am I going to build? Yeah, what, I think that. What, 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 what do I do? What do I do now? I built a little shack. I have to add to it a bit, and then I'm like, oh, and then I look at the graphics. I'm like, they're not great. They're not great. Well, I don't mind. And that then, and, and that's the same problem I had with Lego because I, you know, you, you 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 build some towns or some shops or whatever you want to do, right? And then you're like, oh, I've done that now. And and I, I maybe maybe it's just me, but I got a bit bored. Or I'm not that sort of person who's going to spend. Or sorry. Or a public park where a brawl takes place, you know. You know in, 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 in your case, <laughs> yes. And and yet I get to the stage where I'm sort of like, well. I can't be bothered to build a big fortress. Or spend hours yeah. mining. My for brother, my brother's really good at building red. Lego stuff and sort of Minecraft stuff. He's really my brother's more kind of uh, logistical uh, and more sort of yeah. yeah, good with building things and knowing how things work. So I kind of got him to start that, and then as it's kind of progressed, I've kind of moved the set along and built my own parts onto it with you know him starting it off. So you know that's kind Surely. of uh, in many ways I would prefer actually drawing out a. A diagram of a building rather than physically building it. That's the yeah. sort of way I look at that sort of thing. But I mean, Minecraft is hugely popular. I can see why because it does have a lot of creative freedom, especially now it's out on 360 and PS3. Um, and and it, it's it's a again as with all the best video games and games and possibly things in the world, it's the simplest concept that is the best. Some blocks that you yeah. get to put wherever you want. Mm. That's about mm. it. But it works, and, and it does. the multiplayer so aspect is really good it, because you can actually share and interact with other people on there. And multiplayer, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, this is where, of course, it comes back to Lego because that's what you used to do with your mates when you were like five. You'd play with, you know, you know, you'd play with Lego and that sort of thing, mm. and build cities together and that sort of thing. You do it, do it with your family. So, yeah, that that's that's come down to basics again. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, Lego has been around for a long time now. I think. Uh, my grandmother on my dad's side was saying once uh, how they had this sort of cheap knockoff of Lego in their house, you know, because I don't know if they could afford it at the time. And, you know, when my dad was a baby, it's like apparently the blocks weren't going together properly. And uh, he would just sort of be like, Aah! and throw it behind him and just get all bad tempered. They'd uh, probably yeah. tread on it afterwards and go, like, <laughs> ah, ah. Yes, Beta Builder, I think that knockoff was called. Uh, so yeah, Minecraft. Uh, I I like I like how charming it still is. I I I like the originality of it and the constructiveness of it. I just think it's lost a bit of its charm due to immense popularity, which happens with anything. To be honest, uh, you know, some you know good yeah, YouTube channels eventually become commercialized and things like that as well. So yes. That's, that's that for that, John. Got anything else for us? <laughs> <laughs> well, on another front, how's Riser doing, Richard? Um, yeah, we're doing a lot of work at the moment. There's lots of things going on. 
Um, we haven't really done much, you know, updates or news um, with regards to things because we are working on things. Um, I'm not going to give too much away, but um, this evening I'm going to be speaking with Garrett Wang, obviously Ensign cool. Harry Kim, uh, with our winner who is uh, Chris. And so we're going to get that sorted uh, this evening. We'll have a nice chat and ask some questions and take things from there. Um, and really, it's just starting to plan for uh, DST3. Are you planning any more competitions like that? Um, there are stuff in the pipeline, just not for this month, I don't think. I think we want to concentrate on getting new features, new looks and things like that out there um, before we start doing another competition. Right, okay. Yes. Speaking of DST3, um, who's going? <laughs> well, Richard's going because he's going to be promoting Riser with his like hard things. Have you got? Have you ordered those yet? No, not yet. Oh, excuse yes. me. Riser's going there. <laughs> John gave yeah, me the... They'll be like that. They'll be like at that. The first be those ones, London, at the first Star Trek London, John Fisher, that man there, gave me these. Um, you pointed the wrong way. <laughs> yeah, that's right. He gave, yeah. me these, he gave me these for to promote the last outpost. He said, "Hand them out," and I couldn't find anyone to hand them out to. But yeah, that, I, I, that I, I have quite a few as well, which are currently in my drawer over there, and I, it, it's uh, hard look, to find a lot look, of Elite Force players. I've got a surprise for you. Look over there, my brother. Uh, is the Star Trek Unity thing that you gave him? Remember? First one. I don't know if oh wow! One. Yes, just about. Yeah, yeah that is Rob Robinson. Well, that's all his Star Trek London stuff, but there it is in the bottom right-hand corner. So there you go. Oh, You're on famous. my wall. <laughs> you see, the beauty of it is free stuff's going to keep coming. So we'll, I'll have something riser based to put on my wall when we get back, and so will you. And then it'll, it'll yeah. be great. This, and then I'll be able to show my friends if you like Star Trek. Go on this, go on this social network. It's great. That's what we'll do. So. Yeah, publicity is the name of the game, and I'll be printing off some more Unity stuff to hand out at Star Trek Online 3, which I am going to now, I think, I hope. You said, oh, you said Friday Saturday. and Saturday, didn't you? <laughs> yes, but, uh, you know, anything can happen in my life, so <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, well, I'm, to quote a uh, phrase coined by John, um, a feasibility study is still currently underway because I don't know if there's been a bit of trickiness on the Sunday for trains going back because it mm. works on the line or something. I've heard the journey might be longer or something like that. So I will have to wait. Well, and see. it can I... be much worse than some people stuck this morning. Uh-huh. Yeah. With all the it's... big storms in the UK lately, there is some major disruption to um, First Great Western and, I believe, South West trains. Right, okay. That's to the woods. What happened? Oh, they lost a load of signals over by Reading. Oh uh, well, no loss there then. <laughs> but yeah, um, I am I'm desperate to go to London. It was great the first time, and mm. they'll probably improve on some of the things that could have been improved on last time, I guess. Um, well, it's a been, brand new sort of venture, really. I didn't know how well it was as well. Uh, well, destination Star Trek. I've been to London, uh, London and Germany. So, is it is it in the same hall this time as well? Same site. Same site, so it exactly. Same place. You know, uh, it's times like this. Remember, I, I still remember last time walking up to uh, the sort of convention hall. There was like the massive long line of people from who weren't from Britain. And I, I was just kind of like, please say I don't have to wait in there. <laughs> please, mm -hmm. no. <laughs> and then, back so I just got through. Tickets. Convention rule number one, pre-book your tickets. Because I went to London Film and Comic Con a couple of weeks ago and it was fantastic, but... If we hadn't got our, our early bird tickets for that, we would have been waiting a good three plus hours in a hot queue in the middle, of the sun outside Earl's Court. Wouldn't have been nice. So plus wearing a costume if you, as well. If you think you, sorry, plus wearing a costume as well. Well, indeed. So um, if you're ever tempted to think, oh, I'll just rock up on the day and get it. No, no, it's not worth it. Pay the extra five quid or whatever. Not worth it. True enough, true enough. <laughs> Luke, Me and my brother had the Oh, right there. Well, I remember when there was the, they were handing out three tickets for the talks, um, at the original one. Yes. They, me and my brother waited in the line just to grab whatever we could, because that's what everyone was doing. Um, 
there were kind of there was a huge long line, but we weren't sure if it was two different lines or something. So uh, we were with some person in a captain's uniform in front of us, and it's uh, how how long is this line? Are we going around there, or what's going on? Oh, I don't think so. And then we eventually do. We wind all the way up through the you know parts of the hall with people walking around with free tickets, probably there for a good three hours or something. Um, and I, I'm pretty sure I got a text from John saying something like. Oi, you haven't said hi this morning. <laughs> um, then, I, then I just said, yes, I'm currently in a queue. And then John said something like, uh, get me tickets for queue and data, please. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good luck. <laughs> so, I think yeah, what so, they, they did in the end, well, I mean, I mean, I'm not proud of this, except, but I would do it, I would do it again. Because my mum and I just rushed forward and grabbed them. We just went up and was like, thank you, bye. So um, yeah, well, I was that's a the good, way to do it, everyone. I was a good boy, and I waited for like three three hours maybe in a line, standing, no seats, uh, and it was I, I don't, it was winding all the way sort of through the, through the width of the hall. You know, through the width of the hall, it was all sort of winding and. Hopefully, that'll be better uh, this day. Well, yeah, I mean, hopefully they organised better, and I think they organised it a little bit on Sunday as well, when they also limited how many you. could take at a time because people were taking well, stuff the whole group yeah I think this so. was on Saturday that I did that because that was the longest day it was like 10 hours or something so uh, yeah. yeah we it was worth it though because we had some really good talks some were very funny and some were interesting so yeah it, it, it was worth work, it yeah. it was worth it waiting think- they got a big lot of uh, guests coming again this time, so it's not like it's. Yeah. They've like, got the whole of the TNG crew, haven't they? That's good. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, they only had Michael Dorn, Brent Spiner, and Patrick Stewart last time, I think. So, yeah, yeah, and um, Voyager was poorly represented too, which is a bit different this time. Mm. Yeah, because obviously you got Jerry Ryan coming this year. I've yes. not checked guest list in a while, so I am just going to search that up now. Uh, let's have a look. Um, and the tickets are, I think, for three days. For three days, it's about fifty pounds or something. So I could even afford that. It's not too bad. So the prices is about the same. Mm. I would say so. But yeah, they give you less yeah. package, I think, this time. For example, I had the silver package last time, and you had like I think five um, autographs. And what they've done now is they've just taken that away, so it's literally entry, and you get one of the party tickets, and that's about it, I think. Oh, Leonard Nimoy's going this time. Well, he's going to be there through um, oh, yeah, the, but a live Scott video is. feed. A live video feed. Yeah. Top. Um, let's see. Yeah, oh, quite, a a bit. quite a few DS9 uh, people are going. A lot went last time, I'll admit. But uh, oh, Robert Ricardo, that's good. Yeah, I really want to see him. Actually, he's one of my dad's favourites as well. I'm tempted to. Uh, let's see, Alice Craig this time properly. This if, time, if if she doesn't pull out at the last minute. Um. Yeah, is Harry Kim going this time? <laughs> um, unfortunately, not now. What a oh, memorable, man. memorable character. <laughs> um, oh, the Traveller is going. Von Armstrong. Yeah, good, a good selection. Slightly different than last time. There's not as many Enterprise crew, I don't think. And they were good. Well, but- last time I saw um, Dominic Keating, who played Malcolm on Enterprise. And um, yeah, I think it was on the Sunday I went, just sort of towards the end. And uh, well, not a long queue, I mean, clearly so things were wrapping up a bit. I went up to him and he had been drinking a, a certain amount of champagne, shall we say. Yeah, he was mental. And, yeah. and he was a lot of fun, but he was quite clearly intoxicated. But he was very nice, shook my hand. Hi Luke, how you doing? You know, that's my really poor accent. Um, he was lovely, but... I think, you know, it, it must be for them, for the stars. I know they're getting paid and everything, but long days sitting there or having photos, it's, it, you can be quite taxi in that can. Mm-hmm. Actually, so, up here, I'm sure I've showed this before. I have with me the a signed Deep Space Nine Season 6 DVD by Jeffrey Combs. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 that's true. Did he played... Um, Wayun and Wayun. He was on, I think, someone else in season three. He was on DS9 Voyager and Enterprise. Uh, Jeffrey Combs. I like him. He's he's a good actor and he's, he's quite funny. Yeah, he, he, he's done loads of roles and his he played Pink on um, Voyager and he played Tron most memorably on Enterprise the Andorian. So he, he has a quite a good variety of alien roles going on there. Yeah, he was on. He he played. Um, 
that guy in Sunkatsu in Voyager as well. Yeah, um, Hank. that that boxing one. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that Dwayne Johnson, The Rock, was in yeah. that. And as a, as a WWE fan, I'm a bit sort of like I might have to watch that with with that context now. And oh yeah, <laughs> quite like a bit of that. John, who did you get uh, autographs from or meet last time? Oh, um, okay. <laughs> I remember what I've got. I've got... Because I didn't so much go with trying to get autographs, I went with a couple of photos and mm, the free stuff. <laughs> that was with the. That was a, that was a bit of free stuff. What um, photos did you have? Um, I had Patrick Stewart, I had Kate uh, Mulgrew, and John Delancey. Those yeah, are good ones. Yeah. Those I heard ones. John Delancey was a bit uh, sort of tired. Because my brother got his autograph and it was just kind of like, yeah. <laughs> so. Oh, he, but, he was great when I actually met thing, him. Heat, the hours, all that. You know, kind of, they definitely need to keep hydrated, as we all do, I think, in places like that. So, London Film Comic Con was very, very busy. And if you didn't keep drinking, um, and it's quite cramped, of course, quite claustrophobic, then, you know, you've got some problems going on there. Well, with Excel Centre, if it does get a bit hot and stuff, You've got all the royal docks just outside. You can go and uh, <laughs> True. Try if it's and nice there. weather, it's it's nice weather. Yeah. Um, well, to be honest, which Star Trek fan in their right mind is going to leave a convention to go swimming in the docks, John? <laughs> well, they don't allow you to go swimming, but you could go outside for fresh air. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. Well taken. But uh, the, uh, the one regret I've got from last time was I didn't meet Patrick Stewart. So that's on my list. Yeah. I I should, my brother got uh, William Shatner's autograph on a mug last time. Oh, I was just fetching a mug. Um, what mug? Off he I goes. Think, I think it cost forty pounds or something. Yeah, it does. I think it's more this time, which is slightly worrying. Yeah, um, I'm, it's I might get a for his retirement. I've got a lot more money this time because I don't spend much, and so I might get more captain figures next time. But hmm. the mug. Wow. The That's god cool. of Star Trek. <laughs> well, on, on a slightly unrelated thing, but about money, uh, Monty Python have been doing live shows, haven't they? Oh, yeah. Um, I've not, yeah, I didn't go see that because I was on holiday at the time. I'm not a massive Monty Python fan, so... Oh but the reason they were actually doing the live show is actually just to raise money to pay off some debts. Yeah, well... That's, a, that's what Michael Jackson was going to do with his This Is It tour, wasn't it? To pay for legal fees right. and stuff. Unfortunately, even the very rich aren't usually rich enough. Well, uh, I, I think the Monty Python men deserve a little bit more because they're great. Uh, yes, I've not actually seen a lot of it. Um, I've got one of their films, I think, somewhere. They're funny. I quite like Out for something completely different, but that's about it for me. I've got that, yeah. yeah. Quite good. Uh. That was collections from their TV show, uh, like their sort of best sketches, which I think they refilmed, if I'm not mistaken. Well, the live oh. tour that they've been doing is all their favourite sketches done live. Right, okay. Um, I've got a feeling it might be over now, or it's just about to end, and the, the climax, the final show is being shown on gold. Right. Okay. Oh, yeah. They they were beaming it to cinemas, I think. Um, so they might be doing repeats of that. Uh, but of course, not having Frank Sky, not having the gold, I don't actually know the details. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I mean, they had a version of uh, Frankenstein of Bendit kind of actually screened. It was, it was a play, but it was screened to cinemas like uh, the Art House cinemas, the Harbour Lights in Southampton, for example. That So that sort of thing was shown. So they do do stage shows which are broadcast into cinema live. Which is quite cool. And in further cinema, Doctor Who's going to be back in cinemas again, isn't it? Oh, of course, yeah. Um, I yeah, will probably I see... see... I didn't I'll see Dare the Doctor in cinema, but... You first, you first, you first. <laughs> no, no, so, OK. Um, I didn't say did see Dare the Doctor in cinema. I wanted to see it at home, you know, high behind the sofa, the way Doctor Who's meant to be seen. But I would have quite liked to see it in that spectacle as well, and never got the chance. So, slightly tempted for this. Yeah, how about you, Luke? 
Well, I went to see the 50th anniversary in the cinema uh, on the night it was broadcast, and it was it was great because well, I think the 3D worked in this case because uh, it probably worked more than normal scenes to be honest. Well, especially it's probably 3D. designed for 3D rather than the 3D, 3D paintings being a worked. marketing tack it on earn extra money. The 3D paintings worked really well. Yeah. Um, yes, I think they're not doing 3D for this one, which is fine. I don't think 3D is especially great. Um, I I would want to go and see this in cinema, yes, but I don't know if I can. I will have to find out. Well, they haven't released the list of cinemas yet. They've just announced it's going to be broadcast live in them. All the pro all the price, indeed. Yeah, well, I have a, I have a feeling it will be in the same one that they put in last time, uh, which the nearest one to me, the nearest sort of big one, would probably be in Edinburgh, which would make sense, as it is the capital of Scotland. So, you know... Uh, <laughs> it's not Scottish be... independence, guys. <laughs> uh, right, um, yeah, enough about that. I don't think that's going to happen. So uh, <laughs> anyway, well, it's not long to go now, is it? It is not long to go until the independence. Uh, uh, what's it called? Vote. Poll. I'll call it a vote. Post. Poll. It's called a poll, and I can't even vote in it anyway. But to be honest, most people I've met about it um, want to stay as part of the United Kingdom I want to stay as part of the United Kingdom and anyone who doesn't want to stay anyone who wants to become independent doesn't really give me any good reasons for wanting to do so so I just kind of go okay yeah so. well you're not having the pound we'll take the pound away from you so um... <laughs> <laughs> well you know why Scotland joined the United Kingdom in the first place tell me John tell me it was in debt and so, as they couldn't pay it, they they had to join the United Kingdom. No, it's it's not going to happen. I I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah, I they're still paying majority, off like that. The majority of votes, I think, are going to go to not independence. I don't think we're ready for it. There's no particular reason for us doing it. It's just kind of like... You know what it really all boils down to? It boils down to, Hey, we do like the English. Uh, that's not the case for me. I'm a quarter English. I think the English are lovely people, much nicer than Scots, as I'm Cheers. hanging out with English people right now. So, you know, Cheers, I'm, I'm, in the, I'm hanging out with the enemy. <laughs> so, yeah, it's it's all a bit contrived. It's a bit kind of garbage. <laughs> I'll call it that. So, yeah, because I'm, we're all quite south, southern, aren't we? Yeah. Well, Southampton. Yeah. Richard, where are you? Uh, I'm based in Ipswich. Okay. And John? I'm in Gloucestershire. I'm near Edinburgh. Oh, I am. <laughs> so we're all in the southern part, and Trigger Hungry's on his own up in the top. <laughs> yeah, oh it's quite nice up here. It's quiet, though. I mean, I live in a creepy little village, as I said to John, where everyone knows everyone. So you can see the vast amount of life outside that window. There's even a field. Well, you so. can see the amount of light I'm now getting attacked with. Well, yeah, there was, there's yeah. a butterfly sitting on my windowsill for some reason, but, uh, you yeah. know. It's almost uh, like, you know, Richard, John and I are sort of in the Shire, we're in a nice little sunny England, it's all very happy with, like... I am in a Shire! Bears <laughs> ...and that sort of thing. And then Luke, oh, he's in Mordor. He's definitely in Mordor. Oh, no, 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 I will show you the Shire, you orc. <laughs> look at that, look out there. I, I, there's, a, there's a hedge and some there's and, a hedge there's, and behind it there's a field and stuff oh, right. if I look outside all I can see is a load of honeysuckle no 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 I'm not in Mordor Glasgow I've got the sun I've got the sun behind me okay oh, I've got the now blinding the camera hey, 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 hey. Before, the we sun. Start, before we start a battle between nationalities here I would say Glasgow is Mordor. I can I can comp uh, I can compromise a little bit. There's a bit. big tower with a red eye in it that's like, oh, don't like any of you. <laughs> Talking uh, of architecture, has anyone played the Destiny beta? No, <laughs> it's awfully good. It's awfully good. But, okay. Well, like us. well um, it's a video game coming out for next generation consoles. Um, although I. I think you may be able to get it for some of the uh, earlier ones what at some point. What about PC? Uh, no, not, not PC. And um, it's a sci-fi shooter which has a sort of um, futuristic medieval theme to it. 
And it's called Destiny, and it's set on Earth and our solar system so in about seven hundred years. So castles and blasters. Um, no, not at all. It's more like machine guns and then um, magic. Right. Quite an interesting right. All right. Uh, but it's it's made by Bungie, who created Halo, and um, it's really good fun. I've been playing the beta all week, and uh, it, it's on PS4, and. I, I can't recommend it enough. Without, I won't go into a huge amount of details because I'll be here all, all day. But uh, it's it's a very sort of different sort of shooter. It has some really good gameplay mechanics. Graphically, it's beautiful. The locations um, of this sort of destroyed Earth and destroyed solar system look absolutely gorgeous. And the concept is very mystical, mythical, even I'd say, because you know you get a story like a Grand Theft Auto or something. And everywhere's called, you know, San Andreas, or it's got names and stuff. In this game, everything's just called the city, or the tower, or the traveller, or Earth. There is no specifics. It's almost like an um, interactive mythology that you're just happy, happening to be like, playing. I don't think your character even has a name. Mm. The character. And you can create it, you can create it, you can create the face and how it looks and everything, or he or she or one of the aliens. But it's almost like a legend that you're playing through, and yet there's machine guns everywhere, and it's great. So it's it's quite a bizarre sort of mishmash of themes and styles. But so far, so good. I'm gonna pre-order it. It's it's really good. Try it now until tomorrow when the beta ends. <laughs> Right then. Um, I don't know how we got from Scotland being Mordor to that, but okay. <laughs> oh, well, no, I think it was, it was because when I when I suddenly thought of the the um, tower in Lord of the Rings that's got the eye in it, yeah, yeah, it's got Sauron in it. It reminded me of the architecture of this game, which which is beautiful. It's got very similar sort of epic mythos, sort of castles, and then you've got like nuclear facilities. It's quite a it's it's a mishmash, like I said. Yeah, yo, yo, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Big Ben is Baradur. I think Big Ben is the the eye of Sauron. You know, I, I, I think right. Yeah, I like I Big Ben. Think, I, I, I think a selfie than more. This more the Shire than Mordor. I'll, I'll tell you that. I would bring my camera, but the cable can only extend so far. But uh, yeah, that's, that's that. I guess. That is not correct. So until next time, this has been the data stream. Thank you. Long prosper. Bye. Yeah, bye.